I got the forks kind of just snug in there. I'll get the front wheel and the brakes back on, and then I'll remember to tighten this bolt up here on the top, the fork cap bolt. I'll remember to tighten that, and then I can tighten this 14 millimeter. But everything else is just going to be reassembling the forks and the front wheel. So I'll leave the camera going just because I'm, I got it on, but I'm not going to really put too much emphasis on it. So anyway, that's where we're going, going, and I kind of like to look without the, uh, let me put this USA at the front like I did on the last one, maybe, no, maybe not, okay, but I kind of like it with the gator wipes, um, kind of cleans up the fork leg, I'm not on a motocross track, I'm not behind a lot of riders when I go riding, so I don't have rocks that are going to pit this thing up, and so anyway, but uh, yeah, it just gives it a nice clean look having this, uh, fork leg exposed and there's a gator usa and i'll eventually get that usa part in the front like i did on this but right now let's put this guy together so we got bolts do, 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 do. Do, 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 do. And we got a brake caliper. And the brake caliper, I didn't let it hang and sit there. I know it puts stress on it. So, but it was kind of nice. I just fit it right here on the ricochet skid plate. So, um, so anyway, I wasn't like stressing my brake lines or anything because stress brake lines is the result of a lot of horrible things. All right. No, I'm teasing. Anyway, I didn't stress the brake lines by doing that. I was going to get a, a motorcycle tie down to hang it from that and it, it fit just fine there in the skid plate. So if you got a skid plate, well, that works out pretty fancy. And we got one of those. I got those. I got those. I'm just getting all my stuff. Okay, and that goes there. Okay, now we have a 12. And we're done with that. All right. So let's snug this guy up like here. Remember the bionic man? He'd do it with his fingers. So, all right. I'm dating myself, I know. Bionic man, what the hell? So, am I on the History Channel? All right. Tight, snug, tight, snug. All right, those guys are good. And I have a skidoo, which will go right here. Let's make sure that's clean. We always make sure it's clean. And I have a little toothbrush. And we're going to clean in there, get all that dirt out. Why we are down this far, it's the best time. Perfect. All right, we have a little rag. Perfect, perfect. Get that, get that, get that. All right, put that there. Excellent. And we put this here. There we go. Screwdriver. Where's my screwdriver? Let's put this guy back on. I have a screwdriver. I'm sure I got talking and put it in the wrong spot. Yeah, we we'll use this one. All right, so we got a screwdriver. We put the brake line clamp on. Excellent. All right. Look how clean that looks, man. Oh, yeah. Okay. Caliper's tight. Brake line's tight. All right. We are done on this side. Uh, this side, we're pretty much done. I'm going to get this big box out of here so I can roll my way over here. And those are the tools for the Honda i got to put back in the bike. All right. And let's see. Yeah, it'll be nice because I can get like up under here now, too. Like I said, it's just kind of nice having those fork boots off for me. All right. And then we have our wheel. I've already kind of wiped down the bolt and stuff. I mean the bolt, the axle. So we have a little bit of dirt in this recess here. I'm going to get that. I'm just going to go around it. Perfect. I've already cleaned off the end of this. And this goes in here. Look at that, sports fans, all right. So that guy's good to go. 
Of course, it'll fall out before I get it in there. And I have some grease right next to the RMX wheel. Oops. Let me not ruin my cogent dynamic instructions. All right. And grease. We're getting grease. There we go. So, yeah, she looks like an MXer now. So people think I'll be uh, bob hand rolling down the road. Okay. So, hey, knock it off. All right. So here's our axle. I already wiped it down, sprayed it down with uh, brake parts cleaner. Wipe any dust that got on it. My hands are pretty darn clean. And not clean enough to eat tortilla chips, but they're clean. I'm going to put some grease on it. Green grease. Green grease. I can't say that. Green, green grease. Green grease. All right, we have the green grease. I smell someone barbecuing. All right, and I was at Walmart looking at a barbecue last night before summer gets here. Actually, it's June, so summer's here. All right, so this guy, I'm going to let sit right there. And I guarantee that's going to fall over, and that leaf is going to stick to it. So we have this. I already have the speedle drive. Okay, we're in through the cable. I already have this kind of clean. And I've already spread out the brake pads. I'm going to do it one more time just because they kind of collapsed. So, but I've already spread these guys out. Excellent. So I did all that when I was taking it apart. Okay. And bring this guy back here. All right. And I don't remember the last time I did this. I'm going to hold this till I get this on. But... Remember the speedo drive goes first. Okay, I think it's it's one of those things where you gotta juggle everything around. Okay. So we got the Oh yeah, lots of editing here, I can tell. <laughs> Alright, so we're in the groove for the brake pads. And we're in the groove. I can't see it, but we're in the groove. Oh I remember. I think this guy had to drop in from here. Or from here, that's what it was. Remember, there's something weird about it. Okay. There's an easy way and a hard way. I always do the hard way first. Okay, that's what it was. Okay, so I'm gonna put this guy right there. There we go. So this guy goes in like that. I think that's the way we do it. So we drop that piece in first. Man, I had no idea this thing was this high off the ground. Okay. <laughs> there we go. And am I in the brake pad things? No. Okay. So I'm in there. That's what it is. We use, we come in with the front. I get my spacer. We're kind of Kitty Wampus, I guess that's what they call it. But I'm kind of twisted on shit. Okay. So it's just the front end so high. Normally you just stick one foot back there. So okay. And let me get this guy lined up. There we go. So now my rotors in the brake pads my speedo drives on i got my handy dandy holder there i'm going to put this guy in before i get too much farther down the road yeah i had no idea my bike was this high off the ground so i may have to pull it out a little bit there we go all right so now that guy's in there so i should be in the brake pads again i am this guy's in i am I am, I am, said Sam, and if we straighten the wheel out, I'm having to cross my legs and do this, which is kind of strange. All right, we're going to slide this guy in here. Okay, we still got our spacer. Yeah, it's just kind of weird. Normally, you would stick like one foot underneath, but being so high up off the ground. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. But we got it, sports fans. All right. Don't let me forget that upper fork clamp. All right. 
So we got that. We're into here. I'm going to let this thing go over. Yeah, see, we're that. We're this much too high. And this is one of the things where uh, using the six point, I should have used one on the forks, but I didn't. Not really sure if I have a 22 on a six point wrench, but uh, anyway. And when I was restoring bikes, I just happened to think of it because I had part of it caught in. When you're restoring it, say you're restoring a bike or you have something you want to have real nice. When I used to assemble them, I used to use one of these blue towels and go over like that. And then that way I wouldn't have tool marks when I was tightening it. So you just go like that because there's enough room for that. And that would prevent me from having tool marks on my bolts uh, and my bolt heads and stuff like that. But um, just a little thing I happen to think of. And you guys are doing something really nice. You want it to stay nice. And, um, you know, this I care, but not that much. So I'm just going to put together normal. But yeah, that was a good, a good trick. And we are solid on that. That goes down there. And then I'm going to grab my 6 mil. I mean, my 10 millimeter with my quarter inch drive. And we're going to tighten these guys up. Now we're going to tighten them. Tighten there. Snug there. And we're trying to keep this gap about the same as we tighten down. So we just kind of snug, snug, snug. Tighten, tighten, tighten. Sometimes you may have to like loose, loose. Tighten, tighten, tighten. Just so it looks even all the way around. We'll go back to doing this. And this doesn't, I mean, this isn't holding the bike together, nothing. This holds the axle from backing out. So snug and double tight, just fine and dandy. Okay, so we have all this on. This guy's in. We got to tighten this guy up with a tin. And so what we do is we put this behind here. There's a groove. That fits down into there. All right. Like that. There we go. Let me tighten this guy up. And this holds that in there. I'm liking the looks with the fork gators. I really am. And then this definitely doesn't need to be over tight because this is just a nut in the plastic. So definitely don't want to over tighten this one. Boy, we almost need a bigger washer right there. Okay. All right, so we got that. I'm just going to do these one more time just because I'm anal. I'll have my front end go away on me. Okay. And... Do the old spin test. The one thing you want to do, because we pump that thing, or the uh, caliper, is you want to pump that. And now we have pressure up here, because it would suck big time <laughs> to go flying down the road. And, uh, ah! All right. So now what we're going to do is we're going to take our 22 before I tighten these top bolts. And we're going to snugger. I'm gonna walk over to this side. I know my garage sucks, but I'm trying to get rid of stuff. So, got a couple more bikes to get rid of. And start. Mustang's gonna be gone before Christmas. Perfect. And I'm gonna do that one more time. And once again, I'm using all the biting power of this. I'm not using this, I'm not using the boxing. Um, that's just me. Like I said, I've seen some videos where guys are going. I'll pull on it. Well, you're only really pulling on two sides. So, you know, three if you have the Mac tool or something like it. But this gives you a little bit on each. Perfect. But it doesn't need to be that tight. All right. Now, we're going to get our 14 millimeter right there. And we're going to swap out our 12. Some of you guys are savvy and go, Pencraft. What the hell kind of socket is that? That was an old story, boys and girls. 
Back in the day, pennies used to be have a tool division as big and competed with Sears. And I really liked their stuff. And at the time when I was working on motorcycles for the police department, it was a school vocational program. Um, I'm not going to use this because they don't want to scratch up my hand guards because um, I'm this one's brand new. So, <laughs> so anyway, but yeah, so I, I remember going to Sears and Pennies, and I go, well, I really like the Pennies best, and so some of these things I've had for I don't know 40 years, something like that. Like I said, it was my junior, yeah, junior senior year in high school, and. Uh, you know the bike doesn't know any difference if it's getting pennies, sockets, or I mean, you know, pennies tools or Chinese tools. But I kind of like the old stuff because I'm an old guy. We're gonna tighten these guys one last time. Oh, I'm tired. I'm only had some peanut butter today, so I'm gonna meet my friend. Okay, just wanted to double check. You know, it never hurts to double check stuff. Because if you don't, you know, I mean, I'm out on the trails all by myself and I can't afford to have things <laughs> like sliding up and down in the fork tubes or anything. So, so. okay, we are good to go.